Salutations respected viewers, this is George from Ireland. I'm on Walworth Street in Dublin and behind me is the Irish Jewish Museum. You can see a plaque there, the words up in Hebrew. So this was a synagogue in ye old days. Um, there's, been an, um, there's been a Jewish community in Ireland for many centuries as attested by the annals of the Four Masters which uh, record uh, Jewish people coming over the sea to Ireland in the Middle Ages. Um, <clears throat> And uh, then in the 18th century, Jewish people began to settle here in more significant numbers. Largely in Dublin, they diffused out through the country to Belfast in the 19th century, and Cork likewise. In the late 19th century, Jewish people leaving the Russian Empire um, sometimes came to Great Britain from there to Ireland, sometimes they were intending to sail to the United States. And a few Lithuanian and Russian Jews were tricked by sea captains into disembarking at Queenstown, that's now Cove in Cork, it was an English speaking country they didn't know it was in the United States. They lived here. So some of them very orthodox and kept the rest of Irish society at arm's length, some of them rather integrated. And some in the north they became Unionists, were Lord Mayors of Belfast, some here in the south were nationalists, even republicans. Um, uh, anyway, was they often prospered in uh, business and the professions, which is sort of thing famous Irish Jews will. There was Dr Bernardo who converted to Christianity, um, and uh, who was at Harlan and Wolf, it was the Wolf of the shipbuilder. He was a German Jew who came to Belfast. And then Chaim Herzog, he was president of Israel. His father was the chief rabbi of Ireland. So he's the one who opened this behind me. Uh, and uh, what else can I say? So the Irish Jewish community, it um, reached its maximum number, which is under the Second World War. Then lots of Irish Jews made Aliyah, as in they shifted to Israel. So the Irish Jewish community was in the doldrums at rock bottom around 1991 and it may well have disappeared altogether. But then, that was the Celtic Tiger. Because of the boom, Irish, the Irish Jewish community had a um, uh, renaissance, as in often American business executives were posted to their um, corporation's Dublin office, so that's why the Irish Jewish community um, <coughs> boomed, or what should I say, boomed, increased, blossomed. Uh, and that's why it's, it's coming up for um, 5,000 now, somewhat depending on who won regards as being Jewish. So that's it. There's almost no anti-Semitism in Ireland. I mean, there's virtually none from indigenous Irish people, if I can say that. Irish citizens who are of more recent Middle Eastern descent, some of them are anti-Semitic, I think it's fair to say. So this is the Jewish Museum, obviously not open on a Saturday, for reasons one might guess, and that's at near Clan Brassel Street, which was known as Little Jerusalem, which was the centre of um, Hiberno Jewry. Um, and then, as I say, people left and it wasn't really a significant Jewish community in a particular area. There are a couple of synagogues going. There's one in Cork, Freddie Rose Hill is the, is the president of it. He's not actually a rabbi, but Rose Hill, it's an anglicization of Rosenberg. Uh, what else should I point out about uh, Irish Jewry? Well, Alan Shatter, a cabinet minister, he's Jewish. There certainly was a Jewish school, not sure if it's here anymore. So that's that <coughs> about this agreeable and very placid part of South Dublin.